everybody. Welcome to the live stream. What a big show we have tonight. It's the Sunday night special. Thank you for being here. We got a lot to cover. Wisconsin, what did they go and do with silver and gold? But a lot more. We're going to talk about some scary, kind of a unique way to look at what's going on in the banking sector right now. I'm hearing from more and more people, including my friend Patrick, this very morning about troubles getting cash out of the bank. Also, we're going to talk about the Fed. I have groundbreaking analysis about the Fed, how they are painted into a corner, and how that's good news for silver and gold investors. But let's get started by talking about our friends, the Cheeseheads. Have you ever been to Wisconsin? I go there every summer. I've been to Wisconsin many times. I went to college in Chicago. I love Wisconsin. One thing I hated about Wisconsin what it, it was that it is the was, was, we got breaking news, big news. And I'll tell you why it's big news. Wisconsin was the seventh remaining state in the country that would charge sales tax if you wanted to convert some of your unicorn fart dust paper money into real money, like in the Constitution, silver and gold. Yeah, if you're a cheesehead and you wanted to buy or convert some of your paper fiat into something other than cheese, <laughs> you wanted some real cheese, right? Some silver or some gold, right? The real cheese, you would get charged a sales tax. Now, let me tell you how crazy this is. And then we're going to, and I'm going to go through the list. Don't you worry. I know you're dying to hear the six remaining states do you live in one of the states that charges sales tax? You're going to find out in a little bit. But think about this, okay? Think about this. If you had this in Wisconsin, that is uh, should be five twenty dollar bills, okay? Aren't they pretty? Man, our eyes light up. We're so brainwashed into thinking this is value. This is paper, okay? If you wanted to go buy yourself some of this in Wisconsin, this my friends, is real money, right? Three silver coins. I got to find a better way to show you that stuff. Three silver coins, right? Worth about $100. You would be charged sales tax. Let me tell you how crazy that is, okay? Because that would be like taking this to your bank, five $20 bills, and saying that you wanted to convert it into this one $100 bill and your bank telling you, okay, we can do that for you, Mr. Basement Dweller, Mrs. Basement Dweller, because we have a lot more ladies joining us here in the basement and they're just as welcome here as the basement men. We got basement men, men and basement women, nonetheless, <laughs> right? Back on track. You go to your bank. You want to convert this. Oh boy, my props are falling apart on me again. This, right? Five twenties into this. And your bank says, sure, no problem. But you need to give us another $8 because we charge sales tax when you want to convert some of your currency from one form to another. That's what it's like if you go to your, in Wisconsin, up until yesterday, breaking news, the governor signed it, we're going to get into it. But if you would take this to a coin shop and say you wanted to buy this three ounces, right? And they say, oh, yeah, sure, we can do that. Uh, the silver will cost you $100, and there's an 8% sales tax. It makes no sense. This is more real money, right? I won't even show you the paper than the paper. It's ridiculous that there's sales tax on silver and gold. Absolutely ludicrous. But let's dig into this article really quick because there's some good information I want to talk to you about Wisconsin. Bear with me. Okay, hold on here. Yeah. All right. So, and 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 the, uh, one of the one of the previous basement guests, there he is right there. JP Cortez. I had him on the show about 2 months ago. Um he's instrumental in this. Wisconsin formally ends sales taxes on gold and silver. Responding to an overwhelming groundswell of grassroots pressure. Governor Tony Evers today signed a bill into law that secures Wisconsin's place as the 44th state in America to end sales taxes on the purchase of precious metals. I'm telling you, the founding fathers of this country 
were are still rolling over in their graves, knowing that we have six states that are still charging sales tax on precious metals. Why is this a big deal? You say, oh, Wisconsin, whatever. They just uh, no. It's another chip in the wall. This is happening all across the country, and it's not just ending sales tax. That's really just the first step. Now. We have actual legal tender legislation uh, going on. And I think there's like 20 plus states this year that are considering and, uh, and, and attempting to pass legislation to protect your right. I'm talking to you. You likely live in a state that has some form of legal tender legislation. We're going to have our friend Pat Holland uh, from the Missouri Freedom Initiative on the show probably this coming week, to give us a big update. He had also been out to New Hampshire uh, for the big convention. Tulsi Gabbard, I mean, it was a big deal. He, he'll be able to give us a great big update. Uh, let's read through here because there's some interesting thing. Uh, ba, ba, ba. In 2023, similar bills had been introduced in Wisconsin but failed. Um, uh, started yesterday, so congratulations, cheeseheads, as of March 23rd. You, yes, you, do not have to pay sales tax. Quote, as inflation ravages American families, Wisconsin has taken an important step toward remonetizing gold and silver, a proven inflation hedge, and the only form of money mentioned in the U.S. Constitution. That's from our friend J.P. Cortez. Uh, every one of Wisconsin's neighbors, Iowa, Illinois, Minnesota, had already stopped taxing, okay, okay. Uh, meanwhile, other states had been repealing the sales tax in recent years. Mississippi last year, Tennessee, Tennessee in 2022, Arkansas and Ohio into God, it, it is uh, it's crazy. Like I said, it'd be like you going to your bank with five twenty dollar bills, wanting to get a one hundred dollar bill, and them telling you it's going to cost you hundred and eight dollars to do that. Silver and gold are more real money than paper. <laughs> Somebody should do a class action lawsuit and get all this tax money back. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. It's crazy. Um, um, Senator Strobel said, I'm proud to have played a leading role in the effort to finally add Wisconsin to the long list, blah, blah, blah. He continued the signing of AB 29 removes a key barrier for Wisconsinites. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been calling them cheeseheads. They're Wisconsinites. And I love Wisconsin seeking to build and protect their wealth, and puts gold and silver on an equal footing with other types of investment vehicles. Eliminating sales tax on the monetary metals is good public policy for many reasons. Listen to this. Uh, levying sales tax on precious metals is inappropriate. Sales taxes are typically levy levied on final consumer goods. Silver and gold are not consumer goods. Silver and gold are money. Right, they're the base of Exeter's pyramid. They're the oldest forms of money in the world. You can't tax money. I mean, it, it's crazy. Uh, studies have shown that taxing precious metals is an inefficient form of revenue collection. Okay, taxing gold and silver harms in-state businesses. Yes, taxing precious metals is unfair to certain savers and investors. Amen. That would be us, basement dwellers. It's unfair to people that want to store wealth in silver or gold or platinum to have to pay sales tax. That makes no sense. That'd be like if you decided to buy a, a mutual fund and they would say, Fidelity Investments would say, oh yeah, that's great. We can help you get into that mutual fund. But there's an 8% sales tax for you doing that. It doesn't, it, it doesn't make any sense. Taxing precious metals is harmful to citizens attempting to protect their own assets, Okay. Uh, here, Representative Sordle said gold and silver can once again be used by in Wisconsin as a the historical and constitutional currency it has been. A free people can once again possess and use a currency not subject to the whims and policies of the federal government and the Federal Reserve. Wow, this guy's really, really laying down the eggs here, which have devalued and certainly will again, parenthesis, our money through inflation. Whoa, that's Rep Sort. Well, I like him. I need to have him on the channel, right? I mean, yeah, right. Under the best case scenario, which is all a big lie, um, they're only, they only want 2%. They only want to steal 2% of your money through inflation. 
uh, we know the reality is much, much different. All right. Uh, we will continue uh, fighting for our precious metals customers in every state. Here we go. Are you ready for the list of states that still have sales tax on precious metals? Um, specifically, New Jersey. And don't worry, I got a picture of the New Jersey governor governor, because he rejected a proposal recently in his state. Maine, Kentucky. Kentucky, that blows me away. I think in Kentucky is a free place. It's a free state. Vermont. Hawaii, and New Mexico, okay? Uh, oh, here we go. Similar bills are moving forward rapidly in Kentucky and New Jersey. Within a few weeks, it's possible that Kentucky and New Jersey could become the 45th and 46th state. So I'm going to, I'm going to, okay. All right. More than a dozen states have introduced pro-sound money legislation in 2024 so far, including, is your state on this list? This is legislation that goes way above and beyond Sales tax, Alaska, Indiana, Iowa, Georgia, Kansas, Kentucky, Missouri. Who lives in Missouri? Idaho, Arizona, Utah, New Hampshire, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Kansas, Vermont, and West Virginia. People in New Hampshire, I apologize. By default, I call it New Hampshire because that's the way that it looks. Wisconsin was tied for 45th out of 50, blah, blah, blah. All right, let's go back. I want to show you guys something, okay? That, that governor in New Jersey, we're on to you. I have a picture of him because he already rejected this once. How can New Jersey, how can you cause, how can you charge sales tax on precious metals? So this is the governor in New Jersey. And uh, that's a picture of a weasel next to him. I'm going to offer no further comments on that one. <clears throat> Hey, I really appreciate you joining me on Sunday night. I know this is a busy time. It's dinner time. So I'm going to be quick, but thank you for being here. We got a lot more to cover. Banking crisis and, and analysis on the Fed. I'm telling you, I believe we are in really great shape with silver and gold as we head through the rest of the year. But please give this a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We got a lot of new people joining us. Everyone's welcome here. You're going to find some of the nicest, coolest people in this community on the internet. Okay. And we all love silver and gold. So subscribe to the channel, uh, engage in the comment section. We want to hear from you. Your thoughts are important. Thank you guys for being here. I guess I can get rid of this prop. What should I do with this stuff? Throw it in the trash can? <laughs> Susie may not like that too much. Okay. All right. Here, if you heard about this, have you ever heard of an ETF called SIVR? I'm telling you guys, there is crazy stuff going on, not at the retail level for silver and gold, not much in the United States, but on the wholesale level, right? The COMEX and the LBMA, the SILV ETF. But there's an ETF that quite honestly, I'd never heard of. But we know that in the last two weeks, almost 30 million ounces of silver have been added to this ETF. I'm going to pull it up for you so that you can you can be aware. I had no idea this existed. It's called the SIVR ETF, the Aberdern, Aberdern, Aberdern Physical Silver Shares ETF. Okay, they added in the last two weeks almost 30 million ounces of silver. That means 30 million ounces were pulled in, right? Because they have to own this silver. And people are like, what is going on? To put that there, apparently it's in London. It's a UK-based ETF. Uh, just to give you a bit of perspective on how much silver that is, the U.S. Mint doesn't even make that many American silver eagles in a year. I think the last time they did was during 2020 where we had an explosion in demand. Okay. And combine that, right? That's 30 million ounces of demand, new demand for silver in the last two weeks. With what we learned about India in February, India importing 70, that's a hundred billion ounces, 100 billion out of a total mine production this year of only 800 million. There are things going on. Somebody, one of you emailed me today, a very smart guy who said he's been in and out of silver and gold many times since 2008. He said right now he is all in on silver. 
that he's never seen market conditions so conducive for silver like we are experiencing right now. We're living through it right now. OK, it's going to be very interesting. These next five years, 10 years, we could have. OK, I know it's 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 hard for us to fathom because you, you've been beaten so, so badly over the last decades, the last few years in particular. Guys, could you imagine? I just it can happen. It's OK to think positive. I can really be a I'm a, naturally a very uh I don't want to say negative, but skeptical person. But guys, it could happen. We could have a 10-year, a 5-year, a 15-year bull run, meaning increasing prices in silver and gold. I won't go into my 70s thing, but remember, the price of silver went up 33 times during the 70s. 33 times, not 33%. 33 times. Take 25 and multiply it by 33 just for fun. Okay. And could that happen? Yes, it could happen. Am I saying it will happen? No, I'm not saying it will happen. But I think the odds of some huge price increases for silver, like we've seen in uranium over the last year, right? Like we've seen, we saw in lithium at one point, like we've seen in oil. We've seen oil go from, what was it, negative at one point a few years ago, up to $80. I mean, it can happen for silver and gold. And when you look at the big picture involved, the suppression that's occurred over the last, I mean, it's really like a coiled spring. It's really like that beach ball that's been held underwater. All right, back to my notes, okay? So uh, uh, the other important thing to remember recently, gold has done well in the face of a strong dollar, strong dollar, right? According to the financial world, the DXY, we know in real terms, the dollar's a piece of unicorn fart dust, but in relative terms compared to the Euro, in the end, we've had a strong dollar. Well, guess what? Gold is at record highs. Gold has been pushing through to, we had a new record high in gold last week and where gold goes, silver will follow. And that's been happening in a relatively strong dollar. Right, I've got the chart that I made a few years ago. Hold on, bear with me. Bear with me, because th this we need to look at. I'm sorry I'm not prepared, but this we need to look at. Darn it, where is it? Now I won't be able to find it. Hold on, I'm here. Here we go. This one will work. This is not where the dollar is right now, but on this chart, somebody here, let's look it up. Let's go out here and look it up. Hold on. We're going to look something up together. Okay. And boom, boom. There we go. All right. You're with me. This is Google. And we're going to put in the DXY index. Let's see where the dollar is right now. Come on, computer. Okay. We're at 104. So we're not far off. There's the dollar index right now. That is high, guys, on a historic basis. So I'm going to bring you back to me now. And I want to show you this. This is a chart of the dollar that starts in 1985, okay? And on this chart, we were at 106. That's the pink line. We're at 104 now. Basically the same thing. Do you notice anything on this chart all the way back to 1980? Like most, very rarely has the dollar been higher than where it is today. The dollar is high on this relative. Again, it's, it's all a bunch of BS, but nonetheless, the dollar, relatively speaking to other currencies, is going to have a much easier time going down than it is going up. Okay, that's the fact. That's the reality of the situation. And when the dollar starts to drop, I've heard some people talk about the dollar index getting down into the mid 80s again. And it's been there before. Look, you know, it's been as low as 75 down in this area. I mean, look, the dollar index up here, one point and when? Around 2000. And then just recently, that's the only time it's been that high. If we get a 20% drop in the dollar, a 10% drop in the dollar, it will equate the massive, massive gains for the silver price and the gold price. Okay. Bell time. Oh, I got to ring the bell. Thank you, Susie. Hold on here, guys. Let's ring the bell. We got 100 thumbs up. Thank you. 
and you for being here today, okay? Thank you. That's bells for you. 100, that's the 100 thumbs up bell. Woo, man. I uh, I fixed our bathroom faucet this morning. The handle wouldn't turn. I had to take it all apart. Then I thought I broke it. And I changed the oil on the lawn tractor. I have a Cub Cadet lawn tractor. I didn't change it last year. I was like, eh, it'll be okay. And, uh, and I, I tell you what, anytime you work on a lawn tractor or a car, you're going to get covered in oil. <laughs> I digress. You don't care what I did today, do you? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How is the world? This is what I wrote. How is the world? How do you think the world's going to pay back all the U.S. dollar? Have you thought about this? All the debt, right? A lot of the debt in the world is based in U.S. dollars. Interest rates are high. The only way the world's going to have any chance at paying back their debt, including the United States, is with a devalued dollar. That's the only way it works. That's one of the secrets. I got a few more big secrets I'm going to share with you later, but that's the only way it works is with a devalued dollar. The world will welcome a lower dollar, and that will be rocket fuel for the price of silver and gold. Hey, well, I got a chance. Let's say thank you to channel sponsor Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X. Look, if you're in the market for silver or gold, do yourself a favor and check out Pimbex. You'll find they have great selection, a great reputation, great customer service, right? You want to work with a company you can trust. You need to do your own research. I'm not telling you what to do. But the big, big bonus, if you compare Pimbex to the other online bullion dealers, you're going to find you get the exact same product at a much better price, which means you will get more metal for your money. Thank you, Pimbex, for sponsoring Ron's Basement and making this live stream, making the channel possible. Where was I? Uh, let's talk about financial crisis, banking crisis. Let's talk about what could happen. What do you think is going to happen to silver and gold next time we have a banking crisis? You know what I think. I tell you what's going to happen. We have a banking crisis. We have another financial, and it'll probably be something different. It's never what we're expecting, but the conditions are right. You know, when they put out like tornado warnings, I live in St. Louis and this time of year, you know, they'll say, oh, the conditions are right for tornado watch, not a warning. I think a warning means they've spotted a tornado. Super chat from Ron McAdams. Thank you, Ron McAdams, for the super chat. Thank you, Cool Ken. <laughs> yeah, no, no joke, Cool Ken TG. Thank you for that super chat. Talk about inflation. Man, I went to the auto parts store. I bought a five-gallon jug of 10W30 oil. I mean, I'm thinking, what happened? I remember what the stuff was like. A, like it was, it was, I don't know. It was crazy. Everything's expensive. You know, even AutoZone, oil, everything, everything, everything. But thank you for that, my friend. Um, oh, you know, this is this is exciting. This is exciting. I'm going to tell you what will happen when we have another financial crisis. Come, come in a little closer there, basement dweller. <laughs> the news is, uh, is going to spread faster. And again, you never know, but these things always happen, right? The news will spread faster, okay? And the demand for silver and gold, because now... A lot of the retail demand for silver and gold is online. People know places like Pimbex, you'll get the best deal. You'll get the best service, right? People will buy. People will clear out the shelves. Not so much at your local coin shop, although they'll be cleared out as well. But all the big online bullion dealers, it can happen now because of the Internet and because of online buying much quicker than it ever happened in the 70s and 80s. I've talked about that exhaustively. But what, what's going on with banks? I talked to a very, um, let's say, uh, intelligent and uh, smart person who knows a lot about what's going on in the financial sector yesterday. Is there a bank crisis coming? Uh, do they need a crisis? Is there this sinister plan to roll out CBDCs and reset the system? We don't know, but let's talk about what we do know. 2023, banking crisis, Signature Bank. Remember, this was one year ago. Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic Bank, 
They had $523 billion in assets. The entire financial crisis in 2008, all the banks that failed were less than what we had just one year ago. Bear that in mind. Everybody, including me, I'm guilty. Everybody's talking about the BTFP program, the bank term funding program. It expired. It expired on March 11th. Oh, I know we were supposed to have a crisis by now. Oh, right. The sky's falling. All right. Well, let's not forget the banks still have to deal with the problem they had a year ago, <clears throat> which were plummeting values of treasuries on their balance sheet and were just moving into the meat of the commercial real estate that needs to be refinanced by the banks, where the banks are going to have to recognize that the collateral for a lot of the big loans they made are bad. That's your money that they blew on treasuries, on commercial real estate, okay? The BTFP program was money printing. That's gone right now. Banks are in big, big trouble. Higher interest rates right now for banks are a big, big problem. <clears throat> uh, first, the value of the bonds, right, have gone down. With that. Second, the commercial real estate loans don't work, right? Occupancy is down in these buildings. And on top of that, the higher interest rates make the loans not work, okay? All the banks are in big trouble. Hey, thank you, Snakebite. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> I appreciate that. I think we just traded emails a little earlier today. Super nice. Super chats are super appreciated. But guys, the banks are in big trouble. Okay. I heard somebody say that pretty much all the banks, because they bought up all this debt at 0%, right? They loaned all this money at 0%. They invested in treasuries that pretty much all the banks to one degree or another are maybe like in trouble. I don't insolvent. Some of them, uh, uh, now the value that debt is down, okay? Also, so we know all the big banks, right? They all invested in these treasuries three, four years ago. They all invested in things like commercial real estate. Okay, they're all in big trouble. But what makes it even scarier, remember, you've got the bank debt, you got the paper money, all the synthetic money, unicorn fart test money out there. But you've got quadrillions, what Warren Buffett calls um financial instruments of mass destruction, quadrillions. You can't even think what a quadrillion is. Quadrillions of derivatives. And all those derivatives are somehow tied into all those bad loans and bad things that are going on out there. It could get ugly very quickly. But would they let it get ugly? Would there be some new program that comes through, right? I joked around and called the CRAP program for commercial real estate, commercial real estate assistance program, or some other crazy thing they'll do that will, but at the end of the day, if they do come to the rescue, will they, are they planning a, a, a horrible event that they can use as the basis from which to do some type of reset? Or will they come flying in, right? Helicopter money, right? Save the day for the banks because those bankers need to get their bonuses and everything, right? No matter what they do, it's going to be dilutive to the U.S. dollar, right? Think of the U.S. dollar like a like a pitcher full of Jack Daniels whiskey, right? And the Fed will come running in and say, oh, we can save it, we can save it. And they're going to dump another, you know, 10 trillion, 20 trillion. How, who knows how many trillion this time? to dilute the value of the dollar. It's like dumping two quarts of water into one quart of a uh, of full strength Jack Daniels whiskey. Sure, it still kind of smells like whiskey, but it's just not quite as strong. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? So yes, we still have big problems coming in the uh, banking sector. And let's go, you know, uh, let, let's just, let's, let's do our daily, our daily fun. I'm going to take you guys. We need to check. Let's check and see what the metals prices are doing. Okay. I don't think the market's open yet. Is it? No. Or that's uh, 2164. Is that right? I think the gold and silver are open and trading right now. So looks like we're about flat on gold and silver, essentially. But what I really want to take you out to is this. Oh, our old friend, the U.S. debt clock. Let's see what's going. We just got to make sure. Look. 
like a week ago, guys, this number right here was 34 trillion, <laughs> 500 billion. We've added like a hundred billion dollars uh, in debt in uh, it feels like a week. Maybe it's been a few more days. I don't know. But I mean, yes, just to make sure the number's still going up. Yes, the M2 money supply is still going down, which means we have a silver um, a dollar to silver ratio because the M2 money supply is going down and a dollar to gold ratio going down. Paper to silver ratio right now is at 394. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at what that means real quickly. Okay, if you look at the top of the screen, the paper to silver ratio is the number of paper silver ounces traded on the major world silver exchanges divided by the actual world production of silver. So there's only, uh, let's see, 395 ounces of paper, make-believe, synthetic silver traded for each one real ounce. And then on top of that, you, you add in all the national debt, uh, all the all, all the incredible, I mean, look at credit card debt. Oh, that's only 1.4 trillion or 8,000 per household. Student loan debt, 1.7 trillion, $38,000. That is sad. That's To me, that's indentured servitude, right? You want to better yourself. Uh, the fact that higher education has gotten so out of control, expensive, totally crazy. Total personal debt. Only seventy-five thousand per person. Uh, U.S. total debt. What is that? U.S. total debt includes household, business, state and local governments, financial institutions, and the federal government. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Absolutely crazy. Okay. Well, I've got big news for you about the Fed. Okay. This is a big key <clears throat> and something that we need to remember because everybody's so focused on the Fed. I'm going to tell you something. I don't think I'll, I'll eat my words. I'll eat crow. I don't think we're going to get lower interest rates. Okay. I've, I've spent a lot of time analyzing what's going on. I'm going to have a quick drink of water and I'll be right back. Got to make sure I turn that microphone back on. Guys, we, are, we don't need lower interest rates. I don't want to break your heart. Don't be brainwashed. That's what the mainstream media want. Sure, it would be great for silver and gold short term. We don't need lower interest rates. And I'll go out on a limb and tell you, I don't think we're going to get lower interest rates. I don't think we're going to get higher interest rates either. But I got a big, massive key concept you need to understand when it comes to the fact that I think interest rates are frozen. I think we're going to be frozen where we are. Maybe they'll lower a little bit, half percent one way or the other, raised by half percent. In two years, I think we're going to be sitting here with the exact same interest rate, and that's okay. And we're going to be sitting here with $3,400 gold and $48 silver, maybe $68 silver. And I'll tell you why right now, okay? The Fed is all talk, right? The Fed's not a bank. The Fed has turned itself into a public relations firm. Watch what they're doing, not what they're saying, okay? They're feeding a message that, oh, we're going to cut, oh, we're going to cut, but they're not cutting, okay? They're not cutting, okay? Uh, there's two big key things. The Fed cannot raise rates, Okay? I'm going to tell you why they can't raise rates, because if they raise rates, the stress on the consumer, the stress on the government debt, right? We're paying a trillion dollars a year in interest alone right now. It, it becomes over, it's already overwhelming, right? But the stress that higher interest rates would put on the banks, the, the banks are already in trouble. We just covered that. So they're not going to raise rates, okay? The Fed is not going to raise rates. But, but, but the Fed's not going to lower rates either. That's what I'm saying. I know that's not the popular consensus, and that has nothing to do with hurting the price of silver and gold. Actually, in the long run, it's going to help the price of silver and gold. Uh, as, and, and I'll tell you why they can't lower rates is because inflation 
which is already running hot right now, would really take off. I mean, really, really, really take off. The only time they're going to lower rates as we move into this next couple of years is if we get that massive correction in the market, a massive event that slows the economy down. Okay. So right now, what I'm saying is we got rates. Rates are stuck right now. This is where silver and gold come into the picture. Rates are stuck, right? May 5%. Inflation, 3%. Okay. What's going to happen? Inflation's not going anywhere. The dollar, just because of the U.S. debt clock alone is one way to think of it, but the dollar is going down in value over the next five to 10 years. So when we got rates stuck here, but inflation starts to inch up and up and up and up and up, and the Fed can't raise rates because it will blow up, it'll make the spiral that we're already in even worse. Once inflation gets about here, right, and people start to wake up, and, and then inflation gets even higher up here, that's this, inflation versus rates is negative real interest rates on an official basis. And when that happens, that's when we see the real, real sustained bull market in the silver and gold price uh, like we've never seen before. Again, do you believe that we could have a 10-year, a five-year bull run in the silver and gold price? I believe, if you believe we could have it, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Type 10 in the comments. Okay, type 10. Hey, while I have your attention, let's say thank you to First Mining Gold channel sponsor. They make this video possible. They have a multi-million, two multi-million ounce deposits in Canada. They're a development stage company, right? They're getting projects ready for the big miners, uh, as the big miners in the next two or three years are going to need to be refilling their pipeline. The major mining companies, and this is good for the silver and gold price, the major mining companies have not been investing in their pipeline. They're going to have to rely on smaller junior development stage companies like First Mining Gold uh, to provide them with projects that they can use to refill their pipeline. If you want to learn more about First Mining Gold, you can go to their website, firstmininggold.com, or you can reach out to Paul Morris, their Director of Investor Relations. I'll put a link to his email address in the description below. And a company that's already mining a lot of gold and silver, Fortuna Silver Mines, uh, they have three operating gold mines and two operating silver mines but they've also invested in seeding the company for the future. Uh, they have a great gold development exploration project in Senegal called Diamba Sud. Very exciting company. I love the management there. I love the management of both of these companies. Jorge Ganoza, CEO of Fortuna Silver. You can learn more about them at fortunasilver.com. So Powell was on, six. Jerome Powell was on 60 Minutes a while back. And you know what he said? He says, there's no easy path out. That goes exactly with what we talked about earlier. The Fed can't really raise rates and the Fed can't really lower rates. It's going to be an interesting ride as we go into these next 10 years, guys. A very, very interesting ride for those of us who've made the decision to invest in precious metals, to invest in silver and gold. Uh, let's look at something fun here real quickly. Hold on. This guy, this is from Sky News. How'd you like to be this guy? <clears throat> He's from Shropshire. <laughs> Whatever that means. He finds England's biggest gold nugget with a faulty metal detector. Uh, after arriving an hour late to the dig, Richard Brock, who'd been metal detecting for 35 years. Okay, give hey, let's give this guy a round of applause. He finally found his big nugget said that the previous bit, biggest nugget found in England weighed in at 54 grams. The treasure he dug up was considerably larger. Look at that. How would you like to have that? Hey, I think it's about two ounces, according to my math. Um, but he drove three and a half hours. He was late when he showed up. And when he, found, when he first got there, he found his metal detecting kit was not working. And he had to break out an older, faulty machine. And then 20 minutes into the dig, 
he literally struck gold when he dug up a six, 60, almost 65 gram nugget buried only six inches underground. Uh, dubbed Hero's Nugget, the metal is believed to be the biggest find of its kind in, on English soil and is a, uh, expected to fetch at least, what is that, 30,000 pounds? I don't know. It'll be interesting. Let's uh, tell you what. Let's just make sure the debt clock isn't going down. Nope, it's still going up. But I, I want to go out to Kitco real quickly. Now, let's do a quick check on gold, and then we'll look at silver. Please don't be down a lot. Please. Hey, we're up a buck 40. All right. And that is live. Okay. Yep. March 24th. So that's good. Uh, uh oh. I think my daughter's just got home. Sorry for the disruption. I was going to take a look at silver as well, guys. Our friend Silver, Kitco Silver. And come on, Silver. Don't be down too much. Ah, hardly down anything. Maybe a penny? I don't know. That's not really down 0.02%. Hold on here. All right. Well, nonetheless. All right, guys. Hey, um, let's go into the... Hey, Charles Borden, thank you for that super chat. The, the dead clock will not go down until the printer stops. Annie Oakley, I guess I can't see the number of likes. Can we get to 200 likes? And I'll ring this, guys. Huh? The old cowbell? Oop, that wasn't a ring. For our old friend Joe, that would be awesome. Hopefully you can still hear me and see me, okay? Oh, I got um, uh, I got some hate mail. <laughs> You basement. Whoa, super sticker. Thank you, Chris Dubois. Thank you, my friend. Super nice of you. Thank you for that super chat. Um, so Phillips Baker, the CEO of Hecla Mining, recently was pointing out that 180 million ounces of silver. This is mind blowing. <laughs> That's 20 percent. That's 20 percent of the world's mining production was used in 2023 for solar panels. Uh, I had several people email me and pointing out that that's according to the Silver Institute and that the reality is that last year, that number could be as high, could have been as high as 300 million ounces. That's approaching half of the world's mining production. Is it any wonder that Elon Musk and Tesla are investing directly in silver mines or in one silver mine, I think it's Impact Silver in Mexico? Is it any wonder that the Chinese silver refiners are now going directly? Is it any wonder that Andrew McGuire, and remember, Andrew McGuire is the smartest guy in the room when it comes to analyzing these COMEX and LBMA situations. He's saying that we could be months away, months possibly away from the COMEX breaking. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's, it's any wonder. Okay, hold on here. Uh, what does this comment say? Poor P Yes. Okay, Susie's million at me. That means I need to ring the cowbell. So let's do that. All right, guys. Poor people are unable to buy gold. All Indian politicians and stocks more gold. So gold price should fall even more. China should promote platinum. Okay. Okay. I read that one. That was interesting. Read the gate mail. All right. Let's go down here. All right, guys. Hey, Marshmallows. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the basement. You are the most important part. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to have Brian from Mountain Bullion Entertainment joining me tomorrow morning on the live stream. I hope you have a great remainder of your Sunday. I appreciate you spending 45 minutes. Oh, my gosh. I apologize for going so long of your Sunday evening with me. Uh, be as nice to yourself as you possibly can. You deserve it. I promise I'll do the same thing. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.